Hey, what's going on, guys? In this video, I have a small cap project to look at called Humanode. It's only got a market cap of 5 million, fully diluted 51 million, so about 10% of the supply out in circulation here, as you can see, with a max supply. So, you know, I generally like these max supply coins, so that is always a good thing. So the, the premise here is one human, one node, one vote. And if you've been around in crypto, you know the reasons why that could be really beneficial. So we're going to talk about this project and that use case in this video. Although it's only got a $5 million market cap, it's got 150.3 thousand followers. So assuming that none of those are paid for, there's a lot of eyeballs on this project with not a very big market cap. So there could be some upside there. Not financial advice, by the way. From the made website. So this is the problem, right? The original idea of decentralization is dead. A mere facade behind which validator oligopolies and mining cartels own the networks and dominate the network. And this is kind of where you have, you know, these big whales that come in. And maybe you've seen this if you're in the cosmos or something like that, where you've got these people that they've bought up most of the network when the network was very young. So they're just massive whales. And they get to have a large share in the vote. So if only you know 15 people own 70% of the network, then that's just not going to be any good. Then the network is just going to do whatever those people say. So that's what they're saying about the idea of decentralization is kind of dead in some regard. They say here, human nodes solution, instead of relying on mining equipment or stake, Humano conducts private biometric verification of its validators to ensure that there's only one unique living human being behind each node. Because that's another problem too. You never know. There could be, you know, it might, a, a distribution of a coin might look decentralized. You know, like let's say the top 50, uh, the top 50 wallets own 10%. But what if one, one person is really just running 50 different validators or, or 30 different validators and nodes and owns a bigger portion than we can really tell based on the distribution. So the idea here is that you can really only run one node because of what they do. Here's a little bit into their te tech stack. They use Substrate, which uh, if you're familiar with Aleph Zero or the Polkadot ecosystem, they use Substrate and some others do as well. Consensus agnostic protocol. So it's a protocol for creating custom blockchains that is independent of any specific consensus algorithm. One human, one vote DAO vortex, decentralized decision-making system that allocates voting power equally, right? As we've been, as we were just talking about. Private biometric searching or search and matching. We're going to talk more about how this works later, just briefly, right? This isn't going to be like a whole tech thing. An AI that proves you're a unique human without disclosing any personal information. And part of me wonders if that's why the market cap is so low, because I wonder how do people really trust this idea to biometrically authenticate privately on the blockchain yet? I'm guessing probably not. I know I'm, I'm a little bit skeptical of that kind of thing too. Decentralized liveness detection, over 60 AI modules to prove there is a real human in front of the camera. No photos, masks, or deep fakes can, uh, can psych it out, right? They can't, they can't fake that. And it is EVM compatible smart contract layer. You can go and check out the team on uh, on this Notion website here. So you've got the co-founders and you can click on them and actually read about them. And they all, you know, I'm not going to, you can go check this out if you want. I'll drop a link uh, to some of these resources in the description below. But they do sound, you know, out, after reading about three or four of these, they seem like they can get the job done and that they have the background to actually accomplish what they want to accomplish. So there's, Three co-founders, two blockchain devs, two cryptographers, two front-end, right? You can go through there. So a little bit on how this works, and we're going to get to the use cases, then the tokenomics at the end. So what is a validator, if you're somewhat new to crypto? Validators are nodes that can produce blocks and then that can participate in finalization of consensus. So finality, saying if something is actually correct or not on the blockchain. Non-validator nodes can also exist in the network, but they do not have the ability to create new blocks or vote in the finalization of the existing DAGs. And I imagine as well, they do not qualify for getting any incentives. So I don't really know what the point of running 
a node without a validator would be personally. In order to run a validator or a node, you have to do this bio auth, which obviously stands for bio authentication. Bio auth is the mechanism that ensures that every node in the human network has a single human behind it. Little typo there. How does it work? All right. Each, and I'm just going to skim through some of these. So each validator in the human node network has to pass through this bio authentication. So you've got a few steps here, you know, basic download, generate a key, whatever. Step four, five, and six, though, I think are important. So at, at four, at this step, they do a face scan to obtain the biometric information. After this, your biometric identity will be linked with the validator key that you provide. In step five, authenticate with the network using your validator key pair and your biometric information. Another face scan is taken, and the validator key provided for the authentication is verified to match the key linked to the biometric data. And you might think, oh, that's the only time I have to do this, you know, and hopefully that information gets burned out of the system. Once the network acknowledges your authentication, the network then enables your node to participate as a validator. However, BioAuth status expires after a certain period of time, after which steps five and six have to be repeated. In case the node goes offline, the BioAuth is voided ahead of the expiration time, and then you have to do it again as well. So then how secure is this really with your biometric data? I suppose a face scan. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about how that kind of thing works from some of their what their dev team says here in a second. So developers note, I thought there were some pretty interesting th things that they said here. So they've been focusing on building machine learning infrastructure for the humanoid BioAuth system. Liveness detection systems allow the network to determine if it is interfacing with a physically present human being and not a spam bot, inanimate spoof artifact, or injected video data, right? Like uh, some AI created video. For those who don't know, passive liveness detects liveness from just one image. And this is just me. We can learn about this, right? Our passive liveness detection system can detect presentation attacks like photo attacks, screen attacks, silicone masks with great accuracy, which is currently at more than 95%. So based on a photo, they have a 95% accuracy rate for determining if there's an actual human in there or if there's masks, AI, a bunch of other weird stuff. Our active liveness detection system gives the users the challenge, like blinking their eyes, turning their head left or right, making specific faces, or showing certain emotions. And this system determines liveness based on the results. And you can imagine that's going to be much better. If you have to actively do stuff and participate in that bio-auth, nowadays, deepfake technology is one of the greatest threats to these sort of authentication systems. So then you might be wondering, I don't want my face scan to live on the blockchain. And I think they recognize that that's a security issue and they probably don't want that either. So the feature extraction process during authentication will be done on the source node device and the extracted feature will be shared with the other nodes only in encrypted form. So that scan only lives locally, if I am reading that right. So they are working on a zero knowledge proof system, which allows the node to verify that the encrypted vector is indeed encrypted for the correct feature without decrypting that that feature vector. So, and this is maybe where this project is bullish. One point that they don't want us to forget is that the fact that human node bioauth or crypto biometric solution is not only for the humanoid network; it is built as a layer one technology to work with a majority of the decentralized networks that exist. So imagine if this could be implemented with Cosmos, DAOs, and we're going to get to some use cases next, actually. Five use cases. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but some that I thought were pretty cool here. So automated market makers with human-centric liquidity. So they're, they're vulnerable AMMs, right? This is what you call mercenary capital or like whales that come in and they just they, they take all of the incentives, they bounce, dump the, dump the token, right? And they might be doing that with multiple wallets and that kind of thing. So they're vulnerable to manipulative practices like wash trading. Bad actors can mess with the liquidity pools, distort price ratios, and trick honest traders into bad deals. Now imagine applying private on-chain biomapping to AMMs. Each liquidity provider would be a verified human, not a bot programmed for manipulation, which could be huge. With the authentication tied to unique facial features, you're ensuring that the pool isn't a playground for market manipulators. How about human-centric yield farming? Instead of just throwing your tokens into a faceless pool, you could opt for pools 
that guarantee human-only participation. Then you've also got DAOs. So with the rise of DAOs, there's been a rise in DAO-related scams. Anyone can set up multiple wallets, pile up governance tokens, and essentially hijack the entire decision-making process. It's governance anarchy masquerading as democracy. And this one seems pretty big. Decentralized ID for gig economy platform. So like, for example, they say here, how do you trust your driver, your freelance coder, or the person renting your vacation home for the weekend? Utilizing private on-chain biomapping to verify each user's unique human identity effectively filters out the bad apples without forcing users to give up their anonymity. You're not just hiring a five-star rated driver, you're hiring a five-star rated human driver. Unless Teslas and all those cars take over the world, then there will be no drivers. Regarding the tokenomics here, this is the breakdown. I'm not going to read all these because obviously there's like 15 or 20 of these here. The Treasury Reserve has the biggest portion of 36%. Then you've got the core team that had 11% here. Seed round, 10.2%. Ecosystem fund. And I do believe the prices were disclosed. Yes, yeah, so if you scroll down here, the angel round got it for five cents. Seed round in February 2022 got it at five cents, 10 cents for the strategic round, 17.2 cents in the pre sale, 15 cents and 13 cents. Because as we said here, the, the right, the price has been dropping. So it's at 13 cents right now. So this is under what some of the early investors got in at, right? So this pre sale option. That was in October, 17 cents. We're under that. Pre-sale option two, 15 cents under that, which is which is kind of good, right? This hasn't done a 50x. And if you're looking to invest in it now, you're not going to potentially get you know dumped on, right? The prices just aren't that different. This is what the emission schedule looks like right now. The TGE was November 15th, 2022. So we're at about month 14 right now, right about here. So it looks like in the next year, the supply will double. A year after that, it looks like it will nearly double again and then almost nearly double again before, you know, the max supply of 400 million is reached. And I'm just loosely, I'm just eyeballing this chart, right? I don't know specifically if they're going to double at those exact intervals, but looks like month 60, that's when everything will be in circulation. And this is pretty aggressive, right? Right now we're in month 14. The last year would have been pretty good. Now we begin this aggressive emission schedule. So we'll have to see how that goes and how much sell pressure there really is. But really, the project, right, at this price, if I just go back to the max, it it's right back. So it launched, right? It made it up to 20 cents and then got dumped all the way down to two cents. And then now it is, it is back to recovered. So at this stage, there's not going to be a whole bunch of resistance. And actually, this price only goes back to April. 2023 on coin gecko so i'm not sure when the token was actually tradable or not just that the token was generated november 15th 2022 so assuming that there's not a lot of resistance on the way up on this chart if it's not falling from like a dollar and 20 cents or something like that then you might not have a lot of resistance this chart has a lot of room to potentially go up without a lot of people selling it selling it down, you know? Either way, it seems like a really interesting project and only at a $5.3 million market cap, maybe something worth taking a gamble on, but not financial advice, anything like that. If you're still here, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell for more content like this in the future, and I'll see you on the next video.